Well, good afternoon. It's a Sunday, and uh, just got finished delivering a message down at a little small church. We didn't have too many people there, but we delivered what we felt the Lord wanted us to say. Um, we used the primary verse that we used was in James chapter 3 and verse 17. It says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. Um, we let it coincide with a verse over in Matthew 13 where some of the people were questioning Jesus and who Jesus was. And some of them even said, this is the carpenter's son. And where did he get this wisdom? Well, I went and looked up the definition of wisdom on Google and what Google told me was the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment, the quality of being wise. Well, the wisdom that it mentions here in verse 17 is eight things of God for every believer, every blessing of God for every believer. That word wisdom was mentioned in the Bible over 222 times. Um, just to go to show you how powerful God is, when he created the world, he created the earth for man to live on. Not only did he create the earth, he created water for man to drink. He created oxygen so that man would be able to have something to breathe to stay alive. He created life as far as a function and body to be able to live and to survive. He created every person a soul. And the day is going to come that he's going to come and he's going to take that soul and he's going to get that soul for the ones that know him. And then one thing that he gives, he gives a future. But now we know that there's two futures. There's a place of of heaven and there's a place of hell. And both of them is a place of future. Um, there's people that are in heaven today because they knew the Lord. There's people in hell today because they didn't know the Lord. He also created... A reward, and a reward is for people who serve God faithfully. Um, you notice that it mentions in this word, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, one substance. Think of something that is one substance. You can think of milk is one substance. I thought of the one, a peanut. You can drench it in salt, but it's still a peanut. You can flavor a peanut, I guess. But that word pure is mentioned in the Bible 99 times. And I remember reading over last week in the nursing home, Proverbs 30 and verse 5 where he says every word of God is pure, meaning the wisdom of God is pure. It mentions the word peaceable. The word peaceable is mentioned in the Bible eight times. In Galatians 5, 22 and 23, talks about the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. And then it mentions the word gentle here in this passage right here. 
That word gentle is mentioned five times in the scripture. Um, entreat. The word entreat means that it was written in the Bible 17 times. It's talking about the favor of God. It's not talking about God doing you a favor. It's talking about having the favor of God or asking for the favor of God. And then we see in this verse 17 the word mercy. And that word mercy is mentioned in the Bible 262 times. And I remember there was a scripture over, I think it was in Luke chapter 1 and verse 50, where it talked about mercy and how that God was a God of mercy. And see, this mercy is mentioned in the Bible 262 times. So it goes to show you how much mercy God really does have. Then it mentions the words fruits in this in this verse 17. It's mentioned in the Bible 72 times. And we see in Galatians 5.22 where it says the fruit of the Spirit. Well, it uses the word fruits here, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So I'm glad of the fact that I can read a verse that has the fruits that is mentioned in this verse, and then it says, without partiality. Well, that partiality is only mentioned two times, and that partiality is actually meant for everyone. Jesus is without partiality. That means he's willing to give his spirit to anyone who will choose to believe him. And then the word without hypocrisy. And I didn't bring this out, and I don't know why I'm just looking at it for the first time. But hypocrisy is mentioned in the Bible six times. And it really just means the word pretender. I didn't say that today. I really don't know why I didn't say that. A pretender. A person that says they know the Lord, but they pretend that they know the Lord. They don't know the Lord. If they have never been saved and born again, they don't know the Lord. And then if you look down in that verse 18, it talks about, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. You know, that word righteousness is actually two words. Righteous is one word. Righteousness is another word. It's mentioned 370, 307 times on one of the words, and it's mentioned 535 times on the other word, on the righteous versus the righteousness. That word righteous actually means right standing with God. And I was trying to wonder today what word or what person I could use that would be in right standing with God. And the only one that I could think about off the top of my head was Jesus. Now, some people is going to say, well, you can't use Jesus because he's God. Well, that's true, but he was not only God, he was man too. Do you think that he felt the nails in his hands? I'm sure he did. Do you think he felt the whipping on the back? I'm sure he did. Do you think that he felt all of the thorns on his head that mashed down into his scalp? Do you think he felt them? I'm sure he did. You think that he felt the nail that was in his foot? Yeah, absolutely. You think he felt every one of them whippings that he got the 39 times on the back that them little bones and glass stuck into his body and when they ripped them out, 
They ripped him out of his body. Do you think that maybe he, he suffered pain even in that? I believe he did. The question is, are you in right standing with God? Are you in right standing with God? Well, here's what I had to ask the people. Are you sure? If I'm talking to you today, and I was to ask you, are you in right standing with God? Are you sure? Are you sure you're in right standing with God? Are you positive you're in right standing with God? A lot of people don't know. A lot of people feel that they are a good person, and therefore they feel that, you know, because I'm a good person, that God's going to allow me to go to heaven. The only one he's going to allow to go to heaven is the one that has been dipped in the blood of the Lamb. That's the only ones that are going. Now, he's going to come back. He's going to rapture out his body of believers, and they're going to be off into heaven. And years later, he's going to come back, and he's going to gather up the ones that are lost and the ones that are left behind. And he's going to judge them. He's going to judge them on faithfulness. And he's going to find that their faithfulness didn't measure up to salvation. Because only the ones that are found in salvation is going. The ones that are good, the ones that are a church member, doesn't necessarily mean that they're going. I used... First John chapter 5, I believe it was. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son hath not life. It's not talking about life down here, breathing with air down here right now. It's talking about life with the Lord in heaven. He that hath the Son not the S-U-N, he that hath the Son, the S-O-N, shall have life. He that hath not the Son hath not life, meaning you have life now, but it doesn't mean that you're going to have life in the hereafter. The question is, you have to be sure, you have to be positive. Now, I held this little piece of wood right here, and I'm going to hold it up to y'all. I wrote on this little piece of wood, July the 5th of 20. And if you notice, I drove this screw head in with a hammer. It's in there. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably that long. But I drove it down in there with a hammer and beat it in. And the reason I use this little piece of wood here is because it's important that you nail down your salvation. Now, does this wood save you? Does this screw or this nail in the wood save you? Here's what saves you. It was 12 of 5 on August the 26th of 2007. It was a Sunday morning, which was right after midnight, that I asked the Lord to save me. And so therefore... Because of my message, I showed the people that they needed to know when salvation came in. And today, if you can't nail down your salvation, if you can't nail down a date and a time, I'm going to tell you, just like I told the people in the church today, you may could question whether you are truly saved or not. I asked a few of the guys that was there, 
when they remember starting their employment. One said that he remembers starting employment in February of 1974. There was another fellow there that remember he started his job in February of 1985. See, they could drive a nail into the wood of when they got started with their employment. But you know what? Really, the employment doesn't save you. This date right here doesn't save you. This nail up here doesn't save you. What saves you is when you can narrow down a time that you know that you need, that you have got it nailed, ironclad, that you've been born again. If you're out there today and you are not sure whether you have got the nail driven in the wood and you haven't got it nailed down on the time of your salvation, you need to do that. And you need to do it today. You don't need to wait and pretend, oh, I got plenty of time. No. You don't even have the rest of this day. Right now, it's 331 sitting in my room right here. I'm not promised another rest of the afternoon. And you're not promised a rest of this day either. So I wouldn't belittle the fact that God came and he gave us these eight things right here. Eight blessings of God for every believer. He gave us wisdom. That wisdom is pure. That wisdom is peaceable and gentle. It's entreatable. It's full of mercy. It's full of fruits and it's without partiality and it's without hypocrisy. And if you're here today and you're listening to me this afternoon, you need to nail down when it was that you accept Jesus as your Savior. If you haven't done that, you need to do it. And you need to do it today. If I can help you, give me a shout, elderly ministry. I'll be more than glad to do what I can to be able to help you. Well, thank y'all for listening. Pray for me for the nursing home tomorrow.